Hello and welcome back to Space Engineers. In today's video, I'm once again taking a look at one of your designs that you recommended me on Mod.io. If you've got something that you want me to showcase on this channel, just leave me a link on Mod.io because that seems to actually work, instead of YouTube deleting the link all the time, and I'll eventually get round to it. But for today we are looking at a well-armed small fighter that has a full-on interior, an elevator to be able to get up and inside, and a custom turret on top that's got 8 Gannon guns to blast your enemies with. This is the Macedon Mark II, which is this lovely thing with some glorious neon futuristic LCD screens in the front, in the blue with the pink writing. But yes, it's a small fighter, it's well armed with a bunch of rocket launches, auto cannons, Gatling guns, it's got parachutes for an emergency, it's got all the basic survival stuff inside it, and it's got a great little design with the custom weapon on top that does use the custom weapon controller, so you can let the AI take over it, and just, well, make it fire and forget. So press the F10 and find this in the spawn menu, the Macedon Mark II is, and hopefully I'm saying that correctly, 5,348 small blocks, using the Warfare 2, Heavy Industry, Delta Block No. 2, Sparks of the Future, Warfare 1, and Wasteland DLC packs. We've got a little bit of information about this, actually it was designed for a fancy creative mode only, so it's not going to be used in survival mode, but you might be able to because it is set up, and I personally think they should do fairly well in it. But yes, we give this thing a thumbs up, move around towards the very front, have a quick look around the outside, have a quick look at the interior, fly around for a bit, maybe find some space for if they decide to spawn, if not, we'll slam it into an asteroid, and that'll be that. So my character now puts jetpack on, and float away, there we are. And this is what we get at the very front, the Macedon Mark II. So right in the very middle we can see a bunch of glass window blocks, where behind it is our lovely neon futuristic transparent LCD screens, telling you everything about the ship. Just above that we've got a camera to help drive this thing around and get a good view of what's going on ahead of us. Then below that and surrounding all the ship were these lovely light blue blocks and some light grey blocks to just make up the main body. On the left and right of this main cockpit area we can see a Gatling gun, an auto cannon and then four rocket launchers on the left and right hand side with two antenna to make sure we can always find this thing. Moving down just a little bit we can see some spotlights spinning around looking for an enemy as well as an assault turret for some automated firepower. If we were to move up and start going around onto the side, this is all we can see. So we've got a parachute on the front, one on both sides in case we get into a pickle while on the planet. We've got some blaster edge blocks that lead across to a hydrogen thruster. And hydrogen thruster is one of three because we've got all types of thrusters, so we are good for pretty much everywhere. But yes, we can see how the thrust has been covered up by a bunch of steel blocks, to make sure it's nice and protected, and to make sure it's not too obstructed in the middle so we can't damage anything, actually we have to boost backwards. Anyway, moving around onto the side, that's all we can see, so a bunch of light grey blocks, a bunch of light blue blocks, until we come around over to here. So on this side we've got a red blinking light, then all the way inside this section we can see an ion thruster to help us on our left and right. If we were to get a bit closer we'll see a couple more hydrogen thrusters, they're on the top right there, we can see them very clearly from the top when we go around there. Just dropping down a little bit we can see a warhead battery with some neon troops covering up the top, and we can also see the lovely glow of her neon skin, also in a light blue colouring. Anyway, putting my light on, moving down just a little bit more, we see our connector of how to dock this thing up, and this is one of the two connectors on the bottom that has a similar setup with a landing gear on both sides to help you clamp this down onto a surface. Moving all the way back up, turning off my light for the moment, what we'll do is bring the sun back around so we get a much clearer view of what's going on. All the way around that we'll have to do. As we have to move along, more light grey blocks, more light blue blocks, some more neon skins, and we can see some hydrogen thrusters along the top and the bottom. Move around towards the very bank, this is what's going to push us around. So we've got two large hydrogen, two large ion, and two large atmospheric, with six small atmospherics just to push you around while on the planet. That should give us some nice speed, it's not going to be the fastest thing in the world, which you'll find out a bit later on, but it's certainly serviceable, being the amount of guns on here, being the amount of turrets, we should do fairly well in all combat scenarios. But yes, moving all the way along, we've got a blinking white light in the front here. Down below here, we've got two buttons, but the top one's going to be for our spotlight, so we get good view of what's going on at night. And the one underneath it is going to be for our elevator, pull it all the way down to the ground, to let you get in and out without using your jetpack. You were to continue all the way down underneath here, this blaster edge block right in the centre of the screen. It's your elevator that will move all the way down. And just pulling away from here, we see some more warfare batteries, some more greaves for the neon skins, even more small hydrogen thrusters, we can see some more atmospheric thrusters on the left and right hand side. There's our connector, even more hydrogen thrusters in the middle. And going all the way across to here, there's our turrets, and there's our two spies and the front. Moving all the way up and looking down at this thing, bring the sunlight back around one more time. That should do quite nicely. And this is what we get for our cockpit at the front. So there's a seat, we've got a couple buttons all the way around it. There's a good view of our parachute hatches, 
there's our camera right next to our remote control block, and this is our custom turret. So our custom turret has got 8 Gatling guns on the top, and we got once again some great use of our neon skin, just to break up all the grey blot work. Put my lotto, you get a clear view on each barrel right there. Then as we have to move around onto the side of this thing, there we go, then ran towards the bank, you can just about make out the hinge and the advanced rotor that connects up to the main body of the ship. Looking down like I should have done, there we go, we can see our atmospheric thrusters on the left and right hand side, we can see a bunch of hydrogen thrusters move us down, over to this section we see even more parachute hatches, then onto this part, this is where our elevator comes out and it's fully open on top so you can just drop in and out in space, make it a bit easier to get in and out of the ship instead of waiting for the elevator to go all the way down, all the way up, just makes it a bit more convenient. Over to this part you can see the size of our atmospheric thrusters and you might be able to make out the hum of our hydrogen engine which is helping power this thing. Over to this part, a bunch of heat vents that should light up as we move around. There's a good view of uh, atmospheric thrusters, there's a couple of ion, then right into this part is the part that we saw just above the ion thruster on the side, which features a bunch of hydrogen, a bunch of atmospherics, right behind these barred window blocks. Since so coming all the way down, into here, we see a bunch of blaster edge blocks which do have a little bit of decoration to them. They're using the rusted skin block which is quite neat, you wouldn't normally actually look inside here, but it does fit quite well considering they're being constantly blasted, by the thrusters. And yes, I don't think I missed anything out on the side. In fact, there's the hydrogen engines right there. And I think that is that, the outside of the UAS Mastodon Mark II. And it was bloody fantastic about how it's been set up. What drew me to this ship, because I did get a selection to choose from from the creator, was the gun on top. This thing, it looked absolutely fascinating from the screenshot. It looks very well and it should do very good in combat, especially considering it's AI controlled and through testing, does look rather magnificent when it's continuously firing. But yes, now what we can do is just grab hold of my character and now come around towards the very back of this thing, and we can deploy the elevator all the way down. But first of all, the top one, going for our lights, so similarly the spies on each side, and then the second one, we'll push that all the way down, and now we can go to hop up and get inside. So now it's just moving all the way across into this part, turning off my jetpack, we now walk around here, press the button, we'll lift all the way up. So there's the front of our atmospheric thrusters that's going to push us around. Over on the left hand side, we can see a sneaky survive kit to recharge ourselves on, as we spawn on. There's an oxygen tank. On the opposite side, there's another auction tank, there's a medium cargo container to store a few bits and bobs inside. Looking up, there's the gap to get easy in and out while in space. Over to this section, there's our doorway that we can open up, and this is where all your crew are going to be sitting, waiting to be deployed on a hostile planet. So yes, we've got seats all the way around the outside, we've got two cryopods for a quick recharge, and of course to top off your health, we've got a cargo container on each side, we've got weapon lockers on each side, then walking all the way along towards here, a few more cargo containers that you could use to put ammunition into the guns of the ship. Then looking up, we've got two buttons, where one of them is going to be for your emergency lights on and off, and the other one is going to be for the interior lights to turn them on and off. He's just crouching and looking around the room once again, there's an air vent, there's a little red light, and we've got a few buttons at the back that I almost missed out. So yes, this first one's going to be for your air vents to pressurise and depressurise the area, the second one is going to be for the piston to put it all the way down, so opening up the door, dropping that down, pressing it again, and it comes back up. And then for the final one, it's going to be for the spotlights and the bag, which is what we saw when we first opened up the elevator. Now we can turn around, open up this doorway, come inside here, close up once again, we've got a few more buttons to press, but this is our cockpit. We've got a custom weapon controller on the side there, we've got a lovely light to make sure it's not too dark. On this side, we've got once again controls for the air vents, so we can depressurize on that one, depressurize on that one. Then looking down, there is a programmable block, we can now activate this, see what's going on with it, and there we go, we've got the automatic LCD screen script, which is what's displaying everything on the very front. Yes, before we hop into the seat, just crouching behind here, we then got our cockpit lights on and off. Onto the opposite side, we then got our danger lights, which is going to be the red lights, which will be in the back room. But now hopping in the seat, first person view, looking all the way around, there's one hell of a lot of information, and I do love the colour of these LCD screens. Yes, there's our ammo, there's our ship damage, there's our weather. You might be able to make out a few things at the front there, but we'll hop into that seat in just a second. There's a little targeting thing, there's our flight info, there's our system power, and looking down, there's a tiny little plushie, keep you company. Anyway, hopping out of this, put my jetpack on, angling myself so I can just hit that front seat, hopping into this, this is what we get at the very, very front of the cockpit. So we've got once again our flight controls, our little lock on, our weather, then we've got our auction tanks, see how much we've got inside it, and of course our hydrogen. But yes, the front seat is going to be for your gunner, by pressing number one, it's going to be for the turret underneath it to fire it. We've got number eight, which is a unknown block, but number nine is going to be for the custom turret on top to fire all eight of our Gatling guns. And yes, coming into third person view, doing it like so. 
Now she's taking control of it once again, firing it, moving it all the way round. And there we go, that should be absolutely lethal in the hands of the AI. Now she's hopping out of this once again, coming to the rear seat, this is the main seat. And these are the proper controls we get. So number one is going to be throwing all the cannons at the front, fire them both together. Number two is for the cannon guns, just above that. Number three is for our four rocket launchers. There we go. Number four is for our small lights at the very bottom, which you might be able to make out turning on and off. Number five is for our lights all the way around the ship, on and off. Number six is for our hydrogen engines, on and off. Number seven is for our hydrogen thrusters all the way around the ship, so we'll face it like so, turn them off. Number eight is for our atmospheric thrusters all the way around the ship to turn them on and off. And then number nine, you guess it, is for our ion thrusters to also turn them on and off all the way around the ship. Over to tab number two, the first one is going to be for your reactors to turn it on and off. Number two is to manually open and close your parachutes. Number three, number four is for our custom turret on top to lock and unlock the hinge and the rotor to stop it wobbling around as we're flying at high speeds. Number eight is for our decoys to turn them on and off. And then number nine is for our elevator at the back to open that up and to close it. Over to tab number three, this is the same as the front cockpit where number one is going to be your turret underneath once again. And then number two is for the custom weapon on top. Yes, now what I'm going to do is just lock them in place. It's time to test fly this to see how it handles. So moving forwards, this is what we get. As I said at the very start of the video, it's quite a slow vehicle, but it doesn't really matter at the end of the day because we do have turrets on this, and they'll do most of the work in combat. Coming to a stop, that is what we get. We are still quite slow with that, so do be aware when you're charging along towards the station. Make sure you have enough stopping time or enough stopping distance. Make sure you don't slam into the stuff and break something you want to keep. Now we move left and move right, surprisingly fast with that, it's about the same as forwards and backwards, which is quite nice to see. Moving down, a nice lot of speed with that, and then moving up, the fastest thing out of everything, which is to be expected by a ship that can go on a planet. Then as for gyroscope controls, this is what we get. Got a lot of weight on here, it's a very, very heavy small block ship, but it certainly suits the size of the ship, and well stops it from being completely floaty, and does add to a bit of realism when flying this thing around. Yes, as for that, that is pretty much it for the ship, the outside, the interior, and the controls. So now what we're going to do is try and find some space fires, which I'm not sure if they're going to spawn in this world. But if not, we're going to slam it into an asteroid to see how it crashes. And here we go, we're now approaching the asteroid at maximum speed. This should deal a nice lot of damage to the ship, because it is a very heavy ship. And any second now, we're going to slam straight into it. Here we go. And that was surprisingly not a bad crash. We sort of floated away, then we put the damage back on. What damage would we deal? Not too much. We still had the cockpit at the front. We lost a couple of blocks. We lost a couple of the LCD screens. At the end of the day, that was a bloody good crash, considering we we're going at maximum speed, and we are a very heavy ship. Unlike the other ship in the previous vision, it sort of just crumbled into itself. I consider this a very good crash proof ship. But yes, that is that for the UAS Mastodon Mark II. It's a lovely ship with great design overall, especially when you look at it from a distance. Kind of looks like a, sort of like a small manta ray. Yes, there'll be a link to it in the description below if you wish to download and play around it yourself. Highly recommend you do, as well as a link to the skybox I'm currently using. And I'll be back with another video some point soon. Bye bye.